gentleman from Louisiana, Mr. Richmond, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And against the, the wisdom of my grandmother that said that when you see a circus going on, don't jump in the middle of it and expect people not to call you a clown, I will answer, ask questions anyway, because I think that this is a circus. And the problem is that it's a distraction from real issues that we're talking about or should be talking about in this country. We've asked this committee to have a hearing on the fact that we still have not renewed the Voting Rights Act. We have had no hearing. We've asked this committee to have a hearing on DACA, where we are putting at risk dreamers who make this country a better place. But we've had no hearing on DACA. We've asked for hearings on the fact that we are separating infants and toddlers from their parents with now clearly no ability to reunite the family. So we have sick and maniacal things going on in this country, and we spent six hours with 20% of Congress locked in a room bashing someone in hopes that we can discredit a law enforcement investigation. In my wildest dreams, in my entire life, I never thought that I, a young black man, would be defending the FBI. But we were always taught that we have to believe in the system, that the people who take an oath and swear to protect, people who protect and serve our communities, people who have fought for this country on foreign land, that we give them the benefit of the doubt of their honesty and their integrity and the fact that they want to see justice served. We have these hearings, but we won't have hearings to really look at Russian collusion. We can't even get the administration to admit that Russians played a part in hacking our election. So when we look at what we're doing today, what we're doing is wasting precious time. And I can go down the list on September 7th. We sent September 7th of 2017, we sent a letter about DACA. On October 2nd of 2017, we sent a letter to this committee asking to have a hearing about the Las Vegas shooting and what we could be doing as the Judiciary Committee to make sure that that doesn't happen again. We sent a letter November 6th of 2017 to ask about what we could be doing when 25 people were killed in a church in Texas. We, the Judiciary Committee, with jurisdiction, why are we not having a hearing on that? So the question is, with all of the talent on this committee on both sides, my Republican colleagues, my Democratic colleagues, we have spent far too much time today on a red herring that is designed to do exactly what I'm afraid it's doing, which is distracting from the real issues that we're dealing with in this country. And unfortunately, with the media and our 24-hour news cycle, American people are going to hear this over and over and actually think that this is a real substantive hearing when it's not. And I just think it's very unfortunate because people in America have some real problems they're dealing with how to find their children, how to keep a roof over their head, clothes on their back, food on the table, care for an ailing parent, and we're in here wasting time. And with that, I'll just, I'll just yield the balance of my time. Uh, if there's anything that you think you need to add or that you were cut off and not had the time uh, to add to this discussion, I'll yield the balance of my time uh, to Mr. Struggs to do that. Uh, sir, no, I appreciate that offer. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm struck listening to your statements, and, and I know the history of the FBI. I certainly want the FBI to be something that you immediately leap to the defense of, and I think that's something we're, we're working very hard to become. But, uh, yeah, again, I appreciate the offer, and thank you. And when it comes to the FBI, I also asked years ago to have a hearing on the fact that they we don't know or track how many crimes are committed by FBI informants. We haven't had that hearing. But we spent time on 
fast and furious because we were putting guns, introducing guns into the hands of criminals. But every day, the FBI and law enforcement with snitches and confidential informants allow people to deal drugs in the African-American community that cooperate with the FBI. We still have not had that hearing. So all I'm asking for is let's at least keep our eye on things that are affecting all of our communities. And this just isn't one of them. And the unfortunate part is I think, you know, we've been unable to keep tunnel vision on the things that are important and we've allowed ourselves to get uh, distracted uh, by something that the investigation will, at the end of its day, the thing will speak for itself. And whether there was collusion, whether people broke the law, we will find out. But we do know one thing, that there's been indictments and there have been guilty pleas. And in my experience, guilty people don't plead guilty very often. <coughs> And when you have indictments that say the United States of America versus the time X, of the gentleman Z, has expired, then we know that where there's smoke, there's fire. And we ought to allow the process to play out. With that, I uh, surrender the remainder of my time. The time of the gentleman has expired.